you put some gas in the car, you put some gas in the car, and then you you use some of it, and then right before you use all of it, then you go by uh, refills again. The same thing uh, applies here. So last time, we still had some asparagus left, and uh, we have a, a bit of the leek left, then we have a little bit of the celery root left, and uh, obviously we have some onions. So what I bought today was just celery. We'll talk about that. And uh, and I bought a banana squash. That's the only, yeah, and one more thing. I bought a guava. Uh, the guava is uh, here. I was able to get an organic guava uh, from the health food store. So what I did is I just cut half of the um, banana squash and I peeled it using a peeler. And then I cut it into small pieces, small cubes right here. And then I cut some celery. So what I'm going to do is just add the leeks, the onions, the onion right here, and then the celery root. And then I'll use some of the guava for the unique flavor that the guava has. So what I'll do, I have some, some of the sage, fresh sage that we didn't use last time for my garden here. So I'm going to chop the sage and also have some lemon balm. So the sage and the lemon balm will be just quick, quick chop. Quick chop. And we set that on the side. Then chop the leeks. or chop it or dice it. And again, the leek, I always use the bottom and the top crust and leave the section with the sole last uh, because typically that's always like a small piece. So you have to open the, the spirals like a book, okay? You have to open it up like that. Make sure you don't have sole in any of those sections. Licks are very, very notorious for having sand in between them. I think is the section areas where they grow them. Uh, they always tend to have a lot of sand. Uh, and then other similar product that has sand in it is spinach. Spinach and licks are very notorious for having uh, sand in them. So you end up cooking. When you cook it, the food ends up having a lot, some sand in it. And uh, so... That's just something to watch out for. So just chop those. And then uh, we use a grater here in just a minute. And uh, we should be good to go. But today we are making some black eye peas. We want to make a black black eye peas uh, recipe. You know. And uh, then a few asparagus. The thing to watch out for asparagus is the bottom sometimes I usually hard this section. So I always cut a small section of the asparagus uh, to make sure I don't have any hard pieces in the in the mix. Just cut them in bite bite-sized pieces. I piece it. All right. And then the onion, the red onion. All right. Remove the dry part. Uh, nice small dice. All right. Small dice for both of them, for both halves.
Okay, so here we are. For all that we can fit in the in the board, we have to do two sections. Is uh, we have the banana squash in the first. We have the celery root. We have some sage that next to the leeks, uh, asparagus, and then we have some onions. We can take all this and throw it, throw it in the pan. in the pan. While that's cooking, I had some three tamarinds in the back burner. Uh, I already prepped that. I put hot water while we were uh, waiting for everybody to join. And uh, I boiled the water, brought the water to a ball, threw the leaks in there. I put them in a the water bottle here in a second, shake it. Uh, as soon as I finish grating this, this is the last thing we want to do. We want to grate about a cup of our celery root. Sometimes I look at, at the celery root too and say, hey, can you wait for another a day or not? Or another round of cooking? If not, then I just grate the whole thing. Now I might just breathe a hole. Right, that's done. <laughs> we have the uh, the guava, and I'll grade the guava. Uh, around some, just a little bit of it. Just the meat on the outside. All right, we are good. And that's what we got. That's how it looks like. And we threw it in here. Okay. Okay. Turn the heat on, get some salt. Uh, clean up some space here as we go. All right. Right, then we get some thought. About a teaspoon full of uh, salt is about right. And we, all we have to do is stir it slowly. The star is there.
All right, so we have the temperature control there for for a minute. So we don't have to worry about the temperature now or the food stuff. So we are good. So we have the, we have our bottle here to make our tamarind uh, sauce. Throw the beans in there. Right, then uh, just shake that. Ah, and we should be good. There it. Keep playing with the temperature, getting the water, things with water down there to keep the food from sticking. And I know if it starts sticking too early, I don't have enough salt. I can tell that sometimes, even without tasting the food. I can tell you don't have enough salt because uh, you're getting a little bit of, of a stick early, too, too early now into the cooking. So I added just a little bit of salt. And uh, see whether we get a difference. Uh, for this year, I'm thinking about seven to eight minutes of this year to be ample time. Do very good so far. About three minutes, three more minutes, and uh, we can put a lid in this particular case. Oh, yes, we can put a lid. Uh, but with fast spice, uh, ooh, with the spices, like curry powder. Yeah, hot curry powder here. Uh, some yellow mustard. 
And some block work. All right, so we're good on that. It's just there one time. Right. Awesome. So we're going to put the beans uh, about three cups, three cups of beans. Which is black eye piece. And since the beans are done, I just leave those on top. And uh, place the lid on, put the heat on uh, medium, and I think we have maybe four or five minutes, and the food should be done. Now, there's something I wanted to discuss today, and. Uh, and while we're waiting for that, somebody asked me a question yesterday that I figured it probably might be a good time to address it. And that is the kitchen equipment that you need. Two of the most dangerous things that I think we most American kitchens have are non-stick pans. That's one thing. And the second one is a microwave. But today, I just want to talk about uh, the non-stick pan. Make sure how we look one time. Non-stick pans is a very, very, very recent technology that uh, started picking up steam really in the 80s. Uh, early 80s, late 70s, the early 80s is when non-stick pans got in the market. And they got in the market because one company did a lot of research and they noticed that successive generations in the 80s were becoming very, very removed from the kitchen. So the, the current generation really didn't care too much about cooking. And they wanted the easiest way that will allow to cook, to get some food on the table and spend as little time as uh, possible in the kitchen. But according to their research, one of the things that were keeping a lot of people from cooking or the one thing that people hated the most was, as most of us will uh, probably agree, is washing dishes. So people didn't want to uh, young women, younger women didn't want to spend a lot of time scrubbing dishes in the kitchen. So this company came up with the technology of making a Nancy pan that would uh, solve that problem. Is obviously is a way of making money. There's nothing wrong with making money, but what uh, what I want to talk about is the lawsuit that was finally filed against this company that was making Teflon. And what happened, or how the case came about, was that where the, where the, um, the location, the headquarters of the company in Virginia uh, was located nearby a stream. So when this company was making this Teflon, the water, the waste was being channeled into the stream and will just be washed downstream. And there happened to be a beef farmer just down the street from where they're, down the stream from where the plant 
the Teflon plant was, uh, was uh, who was keeping cows and the cows happened to be drinking water from the stream. So one time uh, the cows drank water from the stream and majority of the cows died. So he called the vet, uh, he reported to the, to the local authorities. And so somebody came and did a study on the carcass and they realized that the uh, cause of the death for the cows was something, some toxicity that was in the water. Uh, so he talked to his lawyer and uh, they did some study and the chemicals that came up uh, was identified as the, uh, the cause of death was, according to his lawyer, something that was probably coming from a nearby industry. It was an industrial chemical. So the lawyer uh, did uh, some study and they he found out that uh, the toxicity came from the industry that was making Teflon. So the, far, the farmer wasn't too enthused about suing the companies. Hey, it's a big company. Uh, I'll probably just end up spending a lot of money. Maybe it's just easier for me to go and buy more cows and talk to some of my family, see what they, what they can do in order for them, for me to get help uh, in getting more cows, uh, getting more cows. But the lawyer happened to be a very, very smart guy. He said, look, if we let this company keep polluting the water, today it will be one farmer, tomorrow it will be another one, the next day it will be another one. And if this thing is bad for the cows, what if the cow didn't die, but only consumed a certain amount of it, just enough not to cause it to die, but make it really sick where the meat will be uh, intoxicated. So this lawyer actually took the, uh, the company to court and it was a very, very long case. It took a long time. And uh, finally, some document, uh, the company was forced to release some of the internal documents that showed that they knew that Teflon was carcinogenic. It was not only carcinogenic for, because of the chemicals they were using. So it's not only was it carcinogenic to the animals uh, uh, and when it polluted the, the waters and that would uh, intoxicate the deers, all wild animals, domesticated animals and such, but also it was very toxic for human uh, consumption. So since then, they end, what the company did is that it closed that branch down. They opened another company with another name and continued to make Teflon. So that's why if you have, I thought it was in good order for me to let uh, the class know that if you have Teflon in your house, you have nonstick pens, as early as you can get to them, please get rid of them. The best thing you can buy for yourself is a stainless steel. And if you can buy a good one, and a good one is one that has a, a small uh, piece of uh, thick metal, big, big, thick piece on the bottom, because this thick piece distributes the heat inside the pan. If the pan is so light, for example, I brought, I brought one, one old one, that this one doesn't have any, any metal on the bottom. This one has a thick piece on the bottom, you know, uh, for example. So this is a very, very good pan to use. So, and this will last a very, very, very long time. So most, uh, almost all my pans are stainless steel and they have a small piece at the bottom. Then, but you also have ceramics, you know, when I bake, you know, this is a uh, lacrosette, very, very good. Uh, it's steel on the inside, but ceramic on the outside. You can see the steel on, on, on the bottom. It's steel right here, but inside is ceramic. So it's, this is very, very good for baking uh, because you also don't want to bake using aluminum foil. Aluminum is toxic. And when you think about it, it really makes sense. It doesn't really make sense 
for you to lose, use aluminum foil, use it once, use it twice, and then you dump it in the, in the landfill. And it takes ages and ages and ages for it to be to decompose. Uh, and not to just besides just the fact that uh, aluminum uh, is uh, toxic and is is actually bad for our our nerves. You know, it's like toxic for your nerves. So that's what I want to cover today relative to nonstick uh, pine. Now, uh, again, we can, we can check on our food. You can tell the food is already done. It's warm, uh, nothing, uh, I wanna get to the bottom. Hopefully you can get, uh, it's smoky. But anyway, so, uh, take my word for it. There's nothing that's burning here. We don't have anything, any, anything sticking uh, because, and the reason why I put a, a top on it is because I use big cubes of, uh, of uh, butternut. So I didn't grate it this time. So I knew I needed uh, to use, to put the lid on so that I can put a little bit more heat on it. So all I have to do is uh, put a little bit more banana squash. Uh, some of the some of the tamarind, and the way I do it is I put a, the ladle with a a ladle with a holes in it, and then. I just push, push, so that I can leave, get rid of the seeds. You see, you see. Okay. And just mix that. All right. So we have enough, we have enough uh, sauce in there. Uh, we have a little bit of the, on the bottom left. Okay. You don't have anything, all of it is gone. And you don't have seeds. Just mix this. This was spicing. And salt. Right. Uh, have a spoon. My spoon right here. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Ah, uh, maybe I can only just a little bit more. Uh. And which is what I do. I always add salt twice or three times. So it's always easier to add salt than it is to take it away. You can never take salt, salt away once you add it. Okay. So here we have. Okay. Okay. So the food is, dead, is done. Now, I have a 
some cilantro or some parsley that I'm going to chop very quickly. And uh, rinse that very quickly. And uh, Okay. Turn that off. Yes, I'm still on short. Well, we have something last year. Yeah. Okay. We have some cilantro here. Okay. And sir. And two ways of serving it. We have rice that we had cooked, and uh, we'll just get a bowl. Uh, one is this is something that you can literally eat. You can make a soup out of it. Make really good soup. Just add water and you have a, a really good healthy soup. Uh, or warm some rice and serve it with rice. So both of them are very, very ideal. If you're trying to avoid, avoid a lot of starch, just making a soup of it will be a, a healthy meal. And uh, so I'll break the rice. All right, some cilantro. I have the olive oil. I saw it. Some olive oil, a little bit more black pepper, crack of black pepper. All right. And that's the tofu today. And uh, just get a spoon. And uh, enjoy. So, one with rice, one without rice. We just take a little bit more water, and uh, you have very, very good soup. So, really good stuff. For this recipe, just the, just like using the rind or the, the peel of the lemon. Some people grate the lemon and they put use it for baking and for cooking. Just adding the rind of, uh, of the guava adds a very, very eclectic flavor in the food. And uh, again, holding the rice and eating a soup uh, still makes a very, Sumptuous one, very healthy meal, uh, without a lot of starches. Is that something you're trying to avoid? <clears throat> when you count, you have butternut squash, you have asparagus, you have celery root, you have leeks, and you have onions, uh, and uh, you have some uh, celery on it. 
So quite a bit of fiber, uh, over abundance of fiber in your food <clears throat> and different kind of nutritional uh, value that you're getting from all the vegetables that you're eating. So you, that's, that's almost literally five vegetables in there that you have uh, in the food. And then the black eyed peas are soaked and almost powdered. So they're not just, they're not too starchy and themselves because they've already started the process of uh, of uh, sprouting. So, so they semi-sprouted. So that's what I have for today. I'm glad to entertain a question or two. Mm -hmm. Any question, any comment? Anybody who has just tried any of, um, has, has cooked anything interesting? Yeah, I would like to hear it too. But man, this is very, very strong sumptuous. Yes. Oh, man, this is very good. Very, very good. Very, very good. Chef, we're losing very weight by watching you eat it. <laughs> I require that you put stones in your pocket for any class. <laughs> <laughs> So that if you weigh yourself, you know, you, the weight stays constant. Yes. And then when you cook your own, you take the uh, your, your stones out of your pocket. So, Chef, oh, man, I, this is good. ideally you would want to warm up the rice, right? Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that looks, presentation looks amazing. And, yeah, those beans are amazing. Oh, they're super amazing. Man, this is Don wrote a story about the bean power, one of the two essays that Don wrote uh, that I found very, very uh, touching was the one on the crisis of faith in the bean power, bean power essay. Those essays, you knock them off the field, uh, uh, <clears throat> Don. Uh, now, these beans, oh, they come close to that. I remember the meal that you made in Iceland the, the first time we met, and it was very simple like this. Well, actually, this was probably even more complex, but yeah. uh, you, you said I made a very special uh, dish uh, for our first meal, our first meeting uh, in, in the flesh in Iceland. And yes. uh, I thought, man, what is this guy thinking? This stuff is so simple. Uh, yes. What, what is special about beans? And <laughs> I think you had some... Uh, you had some sushi nori in there. And, uh, yeah, you had some onions and garlic. And I'm like, man, this guy, he, his definition of special, I don't know if I can agree with that. And then I took a bite and, man, it, it blew my mind. That's what it is. When you look at it, it looks so simple. And that's what's mind-boggling when, when you become more food lyric. You, you realize it's so easy to make this stuff. But yet people are constantly suffering from food illiteracy and eating bad food. For, and not only for once, I mean, I can go to college and not do well in college. I mean, that's only four years of my life. Somebody eats bad food for all their life, 50, 60 years, constantly eating the wrong thing over and over and over again. It's mind boggling. And this thing is just get the basics down, which is, I, I always say 70% of my, uh, my work is fiat food uh, anonymous, getting people from the mind of, of realizing, from the addiction they have, they are suffering from, that they really don't realize this is an addiction of things that are not food. So you eat things that are not food and you spend your whole life trying to adjust. How, how can I eat? Oh, okay, I eat it, I have a headache. Okay, so you just take... Uh, uh, headache um, uh, medication. Oh, I'm uh, eat it and I gain weight. So you start taking uh, pills to lose your weight. Oh, I can't sleep. Oh, I'm having cold, like I shared uh, in last class. You know, I'm having a cold every so often. I'm having a cold. So, oh, I'm having really bad allergies. So you're taking allergy medicine or me allergy allergy drug. And uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. Once you realize that, it's it's really not cooking is very easy. But what, and that's why I have a class every week. Every week we have a theory class so that you can start creating a whole new worldview, a whole new philosophy about food. We have a, a philosophy, we have religious beliefs, we have a dentist we go to, 
We have a, a, a name brand we like. We have shows we watch on TV. We have writers we like. We got all these things all taken care of. But a philosophy of, about food, man, most people don't have. Most people don't have a philosophy about food. If we just jump blindlessly and just consume food. Any other question? We got 15 minutes. I got 15 minutes I can be eating. Uh, thank you. How is everybody today? Uh, sorry, I'll make it brief because I'm driving. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you just say that you use guava to flavor? Because I was waiting for the guava because I've never had guava with food. Yeah, this is, this is a guava, yeah. So, so did you just grate it and put it on or the seeds? What, what did you do with it? Did you make a sauce out of it or what is it? No, if, if you look, I grate it right before. I only grate the, the, the outer flesh of it before I get to the seed. If you the, look, the green I'm, part. I'm almost getting, once I, you see, I didn't get to the seeds there. When I got to the seeds, I, I turned it around. So I grate as much as I can without getting to the seeds. Because there's this real thick layer flesh before you get to the seeds. And I typically remove the green part and I only leave the purple part. And then I grate that all the way around. And uh, that's a very good question. So I grate, I grate it and I grate around, taking uh, taking around, you know. So I grate and then sometimes I grate this way, that this way, this way. Till when I'm done, you can literally see the seeds all around, all the way around. You can see I'm only left with a ball of seed, but I try to get as much of the as much of the flesh as I can. And uh, yeah, oh, that's try that. Whatever you cook, if you can find guava at, at your store, try it and see what, what what a difference it makes. Once you mix guava, guava and uh, that's the that's the logic here. Guava and tamarind. I'm making a sauce of guava and tamarind. If I'm ah. there, we'll, yeah, we'll do that sometime. But today, I did it separately. But when I'm cooking, sometimes I just grate this. I add a little sauce in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the onions. And, and it, then it becomes a really, really nice sauce. And I can eat an egg with it. If I was eating an egg, I can cook with it. I can just cook beans. For example, I might be just have, uh, look, I have only this much beans left. That's all the black eyed peas I have. That's the only black eyed peas I have. I don't have any more. So I might come today in the evening and say, I don't, I, I, I already ate during class. So I really don't want to eat anything else. That's number one. Number two, I don't want to have, I have two minutes little things left. So I don't really feel like going to the store buying anything else. So I can literally just make a sauce with the guava and the tamarind and maybe uh, celery. I have a whole lot of celery. And then I can add the beans in there. And because of the flavor of the guava and the uh, tamarind, man, those beans just have a totally different uh, flavor. I could even make a, a soup with it. You know, I can make the sauce and then add a little bit more water so that now these beans and the celery and uh, maybe I have seaweed. I can put some seaweed in there. Oh, man, and flavor with a little black pepper. Oh, that's really, really good soup. And that's why I tell you, I'm not giving you recipes. People, that's one, one of the worst uh, um, expectations you can have or the worst assumption you can come into this class with is that I'm going to give you recipes. I'm not here to give you recipes. I'm only here to teach you about ingredients, about how to prepare food, how to understand the food and the science of cooking and how you can analyze your own taste buds. If you try the guava, fine, it doesn't, doesn't work. Try something else. But at least I've opened your mind and your creativity around cooking. We are very, very uncreative when it comes to cooking. We just cook how my grandmother cooked. How my, and that's why <laughs> I, I really, yeah, how this is how my grandmother made. Your grandmother made that because that's what she knew. The, your grandmother wasn't cooking that like her great, great, great grandmother. No, everybody adds something new. No generation does exactly what the previous generation does. No, 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 not at all. 
That's redundancy. That's backwardness. You find things that work and then you add onto them or you refine them or you try to become more efficient. That's what civilization is. That's what we call, that's what we term, that's part of what being civil or civilized does. That you can learn, you can think, you can be creative and you can keep uh, uh, adding different things. But we can't just say, oh, we only, my grandmother only grew this. That's what I, oh man, that's the most backward statement I can make. My grandmother would, uh, would, uh, would probably um, would be very, very, very pissed off. I did this, that's why I send you to school. What is the purpose of me coming all the way from the US? A lot of old people, young people, family members, community members raise money for me to come to the US to study. And then I go back to do the same thing they were doing. Okay, why did I why did I waste their time and their energy, my time and my energy and the energy of my family to come all the way to the US and then go back and then I don't I don't I don't have even that much change that I can offer to the community. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Make, make sure? That's good. That's good. That's good. So, um, I, I think I think a follow up question will be, and, and maybe we haven't got. I think we you 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 at one time mentioned that you're going to talk about spices and herbs and how to use them because I think that's that that's something that um you're waiting for. I guess okay. we're not. Yeah, we, I don't think we have. Uh, maybe I missed a class on especially the herbs and spices and and. Okay. And, and you mentioned it when we were doing the dressing, the very first class we were doing the yes, dressing. Yes, 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 but, yes, yes. Yep. but we might, yeah, well, we might. It might be helpful to kind of True. help us out on on um, on what to do with some of these things. And, oh, good. and I think Don can concur with me. Some of these things we don't know what to do with them. <laughs> we to get them home. Like, whoa. I'm all I'm always excited when you ask questions, Betty, because I know your brain is working and you're 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 the juice master. So I can't wait to see what we figure out. <laughs> Don is, Don. These things. <laughs> Don is a slow guy, man. Don is slow. So Don, Don is not average. He's below average. No, 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 no. Don is good. Don, Don. <laughs> oh my goodness. But thank you very much. And then um aluminium. Um uh saucepans you say they are bad too and why the aluminium kind of gets in the food or what's up yes yes it does it does it does it does it does aluminum um i don't know whether i have one i, I threw it away i had one i kept for a long time that i had had for a very long time mm -hmm. and um it's an aluminum pot aluminum you can read about it. it's all over in the internet Oh, okay. In fact, um, yeah, it's all over the internet. The, the aluminum and asbestos. And you know in Moranga, especially uh, there's a very big asbestos okay. in Moranga, in Mombi, all those houses are built with asbestos. Asbestos were burned in the yeah. US, right? It's it a, it a very, very big loss. The same thing happened with the aluminum. Aluminum was ruled to be very, very uh, to, uh, a, a potential toxic for your nerve, nerves. So so that's one. So to even use aluminum for, especially when you're cooking, uh, you know, like baking, you know, people wrap meat in aluminum for, and then they put it in the grill. Man, that's that's like a no-no. It's a different story if you're just wrapping something with it and then taking it. But again, that's bad for the environment because it's something that you only use it once. It's something like plastic. You use that thing only once and then you throw it. Okay, so if you think about everybody using uh, aluminum foil or plastic and throwing them in the, in the dump, we are really, really doing a disservice to ourselves and to the next generation because we are really polluting the environment. So that's that. But I can say something lightly because we have we still have five minutes. I love it when we have the cooking part done very quickly so that we can have uh, the uh, discussion because. As I say, my whole, uh, let me, maybe I should say, the way I designed the class is for us to do a lot of cooking. Do a lot of cooking. We do a lot of cooking so that you see different things, so that you can understand the basic basics of cooking. What is more, probably even more difficult to get is some of this information that I'm sharing, that the theory part. 
because I mean, cooking, you can find out something that you like. Uh, you, I can cook something that you might not really be interested in. Uh, for yourself, of your, uh, for your flavor profile, you might not like it. But the information about parts like that, those theories, that's standard. You know, you're not going to adjust that. You can go and read more about it, and you can probably come and tell us more. Because, again, I don't read the history of Egypt as an Egyptologist. I'm only reading the basics uh, or the calendar or whatever else I might talk about. I'm only reading about it from a perspective of food. Anything I read, if I read literature, if I read Greek mythology, I like Greek mythology and Greek philosophy and all that stuff. But all my reading, the thing that will attract my attention the most is about food. <laughs> so you know all that to say that uh, I might not necessarily be an expert in all those things. And I'm not trying to be an expert on that. The only thing I'm being an expert, I want to be an expert is uh, finding effective ways of telling the food story so that people can understand it in the most deepest and broadest way. So you understand food in the broadest way, right? So having said that, I wanted to say something about spicing. Right? We, we will have a class about spices. So why have I not had a class about uh, on spices yet? Because it has been winter. I've been really, really anxious to uh, have better weather, so that I can grow some, some of this uh, herbs myself. I can dry them. Then I can go and buy some more seeded. You notice that we always, a lot of uh, stuff that I'm, I'm, we're using here is powder. I typically don't use powder uh, for my spices. Uh, I had a lot of dried uh, herbs that I've grown during the, last summer and I dried them but I took them to Kenya with me the last time I went uh, because I, I was giving my family some classes uh, so I did I just opted not to bring them back but uh that's the reason why we haven't gone got into the uh, to that point Ben because what I do is I buy seeds like this this is the only one I have I have I think two of them these are caraway seeds Dawn might remember this. We got this in uh, Iceland. And then we have a, a seed, the star of anise. This is the star of anise. Okay. So most of my spices are seeds or barks. And then I grind them for myself. And I mix different things depending on how what flavor I want. So I have fennel seeds, I have cumin seeds, I have caraway seeds, I have cloves and black pepper, for example. That's like a, a standard one that I make. And then I add uh, holy basil in, in, in another batch, another, almost a similar way, but I add a holy basil or actual Genovese basil, purple basil, sage, uh, thyme and rosemary and I grind those. So I might have three or four different kind of uh, mixes of, of spices or spice and harm mix. So that's why I have never had, we've never had the class about spices. All right? All right. Any Got other it. questions? Got it? Got yes, it. Well, I haven't forgot it, but, but don't, don't hesitate to remind me because Sometimes I see more in interesting things and I say, hey, let me, uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, yeah, I see somebody want, uh, yes, somebody want the ingredients for, for the cooking. Yeah, we'll have that, those ingredients for you. And uh, yes, yeah, so, so sometimes I find more interesting stuff and I think they are more important. So if there's anything that you think that is more important, don't mind. That's, that's why I like to make this class flexible enough so that I can, we can go in tandem. We are not following anybody else's curriculum. We are following your, your curriculum is your ability to absorb the information and the time. A, a balance between the, uh, your ability to absorb the, the information that we are sharing and the time that we have. And I want to take you in the right pace. You know, I, I don't have any expectations that you have to know these things how soon or within this amount of time, no. 
get the stuff when you get it, especially for the first batch of classes. That's why I wanted to have a first class where I'm teaching people so I can also, for my own sake, I can be able to establish at what pace, what pace is ideal for people. Because if you have 20 hours, we can learn for 20 hours. You know, I would love to teach one class at 20 hours, but it doesn't make sense because, you know, it is not going to be effective. Okay? But I'm very, very eager for you all to be very food literate and to, to be the best friends with your appetite, all right? Without compromising anything. Be uh, best friends and for you all to have a very healthy relationship long term, okay? All right? Everybody have a good one. If there's no other question, thank good, great seeing everyone. And we'll see each other on... Uh, so if people are interested in uh, orientation class, we have that on Saturday. We'll send a link uh, maybe by tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow is Thursday. Thursday, yeah, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. We have a link for Saturday. And uh, on latest Friday, you have a link. And we can see you uh, on Saturday, okay? If not, and then we still have a, a little a, a class for on the same day for the students who are in uh, Australia. And they send their greetings too this morning. Okay? Everybody have a wonderful day. Very good. Thanks, Chef. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.